Well, hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and welcome to part two and probably the final part of my saga to create a Mario cube that's awesome. This is the smaller one. This is the one I think I printed on the old T-Maker, and it, it worked well. It's full of money, but I have a bigger one. This is the big Mario question block cube thing, and uh, We'll put this on top. There we go. That's how you could tell how big this is. It's huge. I printed it on my G-Max. In part one, you got to see how it printed and how I started to apply some of the stuff to fix it. Now I'm gonna show you how I finally sanded it down after some Bondo and some Spot Putty, how I finally sprayed some filler primer, some regular primer, sanded it down, I, I spray painted it, I airbrushed it, I shellacked it, and then we'll transfer the money from the small one to the big one. All right, but for now, let's get into it. Let me take you back to some sanding and some priming. The cube really did need a lot of attention, so I put lots of Bondo on it, and I used my Multimaster tool to help sand down the Bondo. It worked really well, and because it has an adjustable speed, I'm able to slow it down and not sand so hard that it melts the plastic as well as smooths out the Bondo. Once I was satisfied with this step of the process, I took it outside and I used my air compressor to spray off all the fine dust particulates on it so that I didn't have that get caught up in any of the filler primer or painting or whatever. I don't know if this is required, this is my first time doing this, but it seemed like a really good idea. Once all the fine particulates were blown off, I started spraying that Rust-Oleum High Build Primer or Filler Primer. This is a primer that I learned when you apply it to something, it, it's, it's, it's a high build, so it actually has some volume to it, and then it allows you to fill in some of the cracks and spaces, and then once it dries, you're able to sand it down, leaving yourself a nice smooth finish. And I did two coats of this, and I sprayed outside because I'm all about safety. Once the filler primer was dry, I was able to sand it down and spray it off with some air. If you hate yourself, you should get into model building because you're going to spend most of your life sanding. Of course, if you know Bill and Brittany over there at Punish Props, their life, half of their life, 50% of their life is sanding. They go to comic conventions, they sleep and they eat and they poop just like normal people, but then half of their life is sanding. Sanding and sanding and sanding some more. After the sanding, I used this red air drying putty and it was really easy and it allows you to fill in some tiny cracks and then once it, it doesn't take long to dry, just a few minutes and then you can get a, a light sanding over it. And that really helps the finish of the model because in any sort of light little crack or something that isn't Bondo applicable is now totally fair game for this air drying putty. The air drying putty is red in color and when it dries, it dries red. But this is great because it gives you an indicator of where you put it and where you need to sand it. I didn't use my Multimaster. Even though it has adjustable speed and I could slow down the sanding process with it, I, I used to sand paper and I went by hand and I figured this was the best way to do it. Finally, once I was satisfied with the surface finish after doing the Bondo and the filler primer and the air drying putty, I sprayed it with a layer of regular primer just to, just to finish this process and just to get it to a place that was awesome. And just like with the filler primer, I did hit it with multiple coats of the regular primer because I, well, I believe that's the right thing to do. Next up, it was time for me to paint it, and I was going to go with giving the whole cube a single base color and then painting on the additional color. So the base color was going to be yellow, the darker orange was going to be the highlights, and then any of the shadows were going to be black. So in this case, what I did is I started with the yellow, and I got this paint at the hobby store. The yellow went on really well. One of the things I wish I would have done though is used a white or a lighter color primer rather than the darker gray. It would have made the yellow pop a little bit more. I'm still satisfied with the outcome and a couple coats of the yellow paint did end up being okay, but just looking back and for the next model that I do, I know that I have choices in the colors of the primer and I would probably go with a lighter color for the yellow paint. Oh, and just a quick PS, I did want to make sure I mentioned that I had a mask over my face. I was spraying inside my garage. Even though I had the ability to open the garage door, it was important for me to not breathe in all of these noxious fumes and possibly pass out and hit my head on something and bleed all over the place. That would have been terrible. So what I did is I bought a mask and I wore it and it worked. 
Now it was time for me to tape the model and I went uh, with this idea in mind. I could put a layer of orange down and then black would be the final color I would put down. So I just taped off all of the yellow areas that I wanted to keep yellow and I left exposed all of the areas that I wanted to be orange or black. This process was incredibly time intensive because you have to pay attention to all of the details and because you're painting all over this cube, you, you have to make sure lines are straight. I ended up using uh, blue tape and then taking an X-Acto knife and slicing down certain lines on the cube to make it look good. I know that looking back, it wasn't the best tape job that I did, but for my first tape job of a model, I think I did okay. One of the things I did want to mention and, you know, looking back, if I could give you any advice on this step and this part of the process is not to rush your tape job. Taping things should take a long time and taping is what lends itself to having the most glorious finished product. In fact, talking to Bill over at Punished Props, one of the ways you can ruin a model is just by messing up your tape job. Take your time, do it right, and you will be incredibly satisfied with the results. Let's tape it. Now it's time to apply some detail color and in this part I'm going to do the orange and I'm going to do it via an airbrush. And what's silly is this was the first time I'd ever airbrushed anything. Well wait, scratch that. I had actually airbrushed something before when I was working with Bill over at Punish Props on uh, our Form 2 printed lightsabers that Sean Charlesworth made. But uh, I really have no experience beyond that in airbrushing. So for me to approach this project and just go airbrush it was kind of crazy. And I did pay the price because I didn't necessarily dilute my paints correctly and I didn't always choose the right paints. Even though the orange turned out okay and I'm satisfied, extremely satisfied in fact, with the color, I still think that um, this was valuable experience for me and my airbrushing technique. So if I could offer any advice at this stage of the build, I would say practice your airbrushing on something you don't care about much and not the final model. All right, at this point, I really had to tape some more because I didn't want to get black paint on the orange paint that I just laid down. So I had to go through and tape off all of the pieces of the model I wanted to keep orange, but leave exposed the parts of the models that I wanted to keep black. It turned out okay, and again, I, I think at this point I was getting a little frustrated and I just wanted this to be done, so I rushed my tape job more than I should have. And I know looking back, had I actually taken a little bit more time, I probably would have had better lines on the model. I'm still satisfied with the result, but looking back, I know I can obviously do better. The black came out of the airbrush great because I had switched up my paints and I'm very thankful that I did that because I really enjoyed airbrushing and I'm hoping to do it more and I think with the right paints and the right dilution of the paint you get a better spread and it looks great. One of the things I did learn in this process is how to take apart an airbrush and how to clean it and uh, I did get an ultrasonic jewelry cleaner at the recommendation of Bill well, from Punish Props because that's what he uses to clean his airbrushes and it worked great for mine as well. Finally, it was time to take all the tape off and I was a little scared at this point because I wasn't sure what was underneath really being my first time. But I started taking the tape off and I was blown away. No, it wasn't perfect, but it was my first attempt at a model and the colors were separated where they should have been separated. Uh, everything was even for the most part. The tape did take off some parts of the paint that probably should have been left to dry longer or I should have sprayed on heavier, but I don't care at this point because I was taking all this tape off and it was awesome. So awesome, in fact, that I remembered to talk to the camera at this time. So let, let Joel from the past take it away. Whoosh. <laughs> oh, it looks great. Oh, this is, here, let me. Okay. It's got some areas that need touching up along here. Uh, but it's, it's the, it's the question block. This is it. It looks <laughs> there you have it. That is how I went from this small Mario block to this ginormous Mario block. This is Lauren from a Buzz Designs model. So again, a really big thanks to Lauren for making this. I said, hey Lauren, could you make me something? She ended up making it and it turned out wonderful. Uh, are there things I would have done different? Yes, of course, there were things I would have done different. This was my first time with a model this big and with an airbrush, but at the same time, 
Uh, I'm satisfied with the result knowing that I can do better next time. And it just looks so good. Look at that. Oh, that's so good. It's so good. I'm so happy with this. But now, the most important part, this is the vessel that holds all of the Fan Mail Friday money and the donations to Seattle Children's Hospital. We already have some in there, but now we need to take it out of this and put it into here. Let's do it. Whoosh. That's it, this pile of money. This is everything that was in the small cube. And uh, I wanna thank this cube for being a fantastic vessel for this wonderful money. It's going to pass the torch on to the big one. Let's get this into the block. That was it. This is now the vessel holding all the money for Seattle Children's Hospital and all the money that you send in for Fan Mail Friday. Plus, it looks cool and I love it. All right, well this one we will save for another time, perhaps a giveaway, perhaps a remote box. Either way, it served me well and it's wonderful. Uh, thank you, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to explore more of my artistic side. I'm really hoping to do more model builds here on the channel and I think learning how to airbrush is very valuable. For model builds, I'm going to be working with Bill and Brittany over at Punish Props and we're going to be creating some more stuff. But for now, let's call it good. A big thanks to everybody who subscribes to the channel. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell right now. Don't worry, I'll wait. Thanks for the support at Patreon.com. A big thanks for letting the ads play all the way through. And if you support me via YouTube Red, you're awesome as well. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I do love you guys. As always. High five.